Hello Year 12s, I hope you're enjoying your holidays. However, it's time to take a break from the sun, surf and sand and what could be more enjoyable than watching a short video on areas of management responsibility. In the previous video, we looked at business objectives. In this video, we are going to look at the five areas of management responsibility and see how they can each assist a business to achieve its business objectives. While you're watching this video, make sure that you use the pause and rewind functions. Use the pause function if you need to stop this video so that you can take notes. Use the rewind function if you feel that you've missed information and you want to go back over that information. The learning intentions for this topic are set out on this slide. Please write these learning intentions down in your Cornell notes. The first learning intention requires you to be able to describe the different areas of management responsibility and how each area contributes to the achievement of business objectives. The purpose of this video is to assist you to achieve this first learning intention. The second learning intention is that you should be able to apply these concepts to case studies. You will be able to achieve this second learning intention by completing the worksheet on areas of management responsibility that is attached to the Compass Learning task for this video. To successfully manage a business, it is necessary to manage different areas of the business. There are five areas of the business that need to be managed for this purpose and we refer to these five areas as areas of management responsibility. Let's look at them now. The first area of management responsibility is operations. This area is headed up by the Chief Operating Officer. The second area of management responsibility is finance. This area of management responsibility is headed up by the Chief Financial Officer. The third area of management responsibility is Human Resources. This area of management responsibility is headed up by the Human Resources Director. The fourth area of management responsibility is Sales and Marketing. This area of management responsibility is headed up by the Sales and Marketing Director. And the fifth and final area of management responsibility is Technology Support. This area is headed up by the Chief Information Officer. So you can see here that we have five areas of management responsibility. Operations, Finance, Human Resources, Sales and Marketing, and technology support. Each of these areas is headed up by a manager, that is a person who is responsible for that area. And each of these managers reports to um, the top manager of the business who is called the Chief Executive Officer or the CEO. The best way of remembering the content of this video is to draw up a table that looks like the table on this slide. You can see that down the left hand side I have listed the five areas of management responsibility that is operations, finance, human resources, sales and marketing and technology support. In the next column this is where you can outline the, what each area of management responsibility is responsible for. In the third column you can describe what each area of management responsibility does. And in the fourth column, this is where you can explain how each area of management responsibility contributes to the objectives of the business. I would like you to include this table in your summary book. Now in the remainder of this video, I'm going to provide you with the information that you need to fill out this table. A very important part of doing well in business management is to be able to draw links between the different topics that we cover. In the case of this topic, one very important link is between 
areas of management responsibility and how each of them contributes to the business's objectives. Accordingly, before we continue, it's worthwhile to refresh our minds about business objectives. You'll remember that a business can have a number of different business objectives. These include financial objectives, that is, objectives that relate to the desired financial performance of the business, and marketing objectives, that is, objectives that relate to the demand for the goods and services that are produced by the business. Financial objectives include increasing or achieving a certain level of profit, sales or productivity. In addition, a business may have an objective of increasing or achieving a certain level of market share. Market share is both a financial objective and a marketing objective. The first area of management responsibility is operations. This area is responsible for managing the process of creating the goods and services that are produced by the business, that is, the outputs of the business. More specifically, the operations area of management responsibility plans for, obtains and uses the inputs such as raw materials, component parts, equipment, technology, information and people that are needed to produce the outputs of the business. How does the uh, operations area of management responsibility contribute to the business achieving its objectives? Well, it does this in three ways. One business objective is to increase or achieve a certain level of sales. The revenue of a business comes from the sale of the outputs that are produced by the operations area of management responsibility. Another business objective is to increase or achieve a certain level of profit. Profit is the amount by which the revenue of a business exceeds the expenses of the business. One way of increasing profit is to control expenses, including the cost of the inputs that the operations area of management responsibility buys for the business. Yet another business objective is to increase or achieve a certain level of productivity. Productivity is the output produced per unit of input used. The more output a business can produce using the same quantity of inputs, the more productive the business is. By using the minimum quantity of inputs necessary to produce the maximum quantity of outputs, the operations area of management responsibility can increase the productivity of the business. The second area of management responsibility is finance. This area is responsible for paying the debts that the business owes to its creditors, for paying the wages that the business owes to its employees, for monitoring the cash flow at working capital levels of the business, for preparing the financial accounts for the business, that is, the business's income statement and balance sheet, and for preparing the budgets for the business. More specifically, the uh, finance area of management responsibility keeps the financial records of the business, that is, the records of the business's revenue and expenses, and it also plans future financial decisions for the business. How then does the finance area of management responsibility contribute to the business achieving its objectives? Well, one of the objectives of a business is to increase or to achieve a certain level of profit. Profit is the amount by which the revenue of a business exceeds the expenses of that business. The finance area of management responsibility assists the business to make a profit in two ways. Firstly, the finance area um, enables the financial performance of the business to be assessed and analysed because it prepares reports um, about the revenue and expenses of the business. In this way, it enables the business to identify those expenses that can be reduced. And if you can reduce your expenses, then of course you're increasing your profit. 
The second way in which the finance area of management responsibility assists the business to make a profit is that it prepares budgets of revenues and expenses, that is revenues and expenses that are to be earned and incurred in the future. And it's through these budgets that the business is able to control future expenses because if um, a business's actual expenses exceed its budgeted expenses, then that sends a signal to the business that it's got to reduce those expenses so that it can meet its budget. The third area of management responsibility is human resources. This area is responsible for maintaining a harmonious relationship between the business and its employees and for meeting the employment requirements of the business. More specifically, the human resources area of management responsibility plans for the employment requirements of the business. That is, it forecasts the number of employees that the business will require and the skills that those employees need to have. It then goes and selects and recruits employees who meet those employment requirements. This area of management responsibility is also responsible for negotiating the terms and conditions on which the employees of the business are employed. In addition, it arranges for new employees to be inducted into the business, that is, to receive initial training about the ways of the business, and it provides for existing employees to receive regular training um, so as to refresh their knowledge uh, and skills and also to teach them new knowledge and skills. Finally, the human resources area of management responsibility manages and evaluates the performance of employees of the business. And if an employee is underperforming, then it manages the termination of that employee if that turns out to be necessary. How then does the human resources area of management responsibility contribute to the business achieving its objectives? Well, um, by ensuring that the business recruits and trains employees that have the right skills, and by ensuring that there is a harmonious relationship between the business and its employees, the human resources area of management responsibility ensures that the business has a workforce that will work efficiently and hard. And this in turn will increase the revenue, the profit and the productivity of the business. As we've seen, businesses commonly have objectives um, of increasing or achieving a certain level of revenue, that is sales, profit and productivity. The fourth area of management responsibility is sales and marketing. This area is responsible for developing customer relationships and marketing strategies. More specifically, the sales and marketing area of management responsibility serves customers, researches the market, and promotes the business's brand by advertising the products of the business. It's very important for a business to maintain a good relationship with its existing customers because it wants those customers to keep on coming back to the business to buy the business's outputs. But it's equally important for the business to attract new customers to buy its outputs because that's the way that the business is able to grow its sales, that is by selling its products not just to existing customers but also to new customers. How then does the sales and marketing area of management responsibility contribute to the business achieving its objectives? Well, it does this in two ways. One business objective is to increase or achieve a certain level of sales. By providing customer service and selling the outputs of the business, the sales and marketing area of management responsibility is able to generate revenue for the business. That is, is able to generate sales for the business. Another business objective is to increase or achieve a certain level of market share. Market share is the percentage of the market measured in sales that is accounted for by the business. By identifying the needs and wants of customers through undertaking market research 
and by promoting the business's outputs through advertising and branding, the sales and marketing area of management responsibility is able to assist the business to increase its market share. That is, it's able to assist the business to increase um, the sales of its products relative to the sales or the amount of sales achieved by other competitors in the market. The fifth and final area of management responsibility is technology support. This area is responsible for supporting the use of technology by the business. Nowadays, almost all businesses use some kind of technology, whether that's sophisticated machinery or just computers. Businesses use technology for one of two reasons. Firstly, they use technology to operate the business. In many businesses, machines are used to produce the output rather than simply human employees. The other reason that businesses use technology is to keep business records on it. And that's one of the principal functions of computers. So businesses use computers to store their customer records, financial records, inventory records, input and sales orders. The function of the technology support area of management responsibility is to install and maintain this technology. By maintaining the technology, we mean ensuring that the technology continues to work properly. Well, how then does the technology support area of management responsibility contribute to a business achieving its objectives? Well, one of the objectives of a business is often to increase or achieve a certain level of productivity. As we've said, productivity is the output produced per unit of input used. And the more output a business produces using the same quantity of inputs, the more productive that business is. By using technology, a business can improve its productivity. Technology, such as machines, can produce output quicker than humans. And unlike humans, machines don't need to take toilet or lunch breaks, and they can work 24 hours a day. In addition, machines make far fewer mistakes than humans. Accordingly, the technology support area of management responsibility contributes to the productivity of the business by installing technology that the business can use in its operations. However, um, we have a problem if the technology or the machinery breaks down, because if it fails for any reason, then this can adversely affect the productivity of the business. The business simply won't be able to produce its outputs. Accordingly, the technology support area of management responsibility also contributes to the productivity of the business by maintaining the technology, that is, by ensuring um, that the technology continues to operate um, with minimum failures. Think, for example, of our own school, uh, where we have an IT department. One of the main functions of that IT department is to fix any failures in our computers that there are, but more importantly, to preempt those failures, that is, to stop those failures occurring in the first place. Well, that then brings us to the end of this video. Um, by now, you should be able to describe the different areas of management responsibility and how each area contributes to the achievement of business objectives. As I've said, that is the learning intention for this video. There are now two things that you need to do. The first thing is to read the pages of the textbook referred to on the first slide of this video and supplement your notes with any information from that reading that you think should be useful. Primarily, your notes should have taken the form of the table to be included in the summary book that I described at the outset of this video. The second thing you need to do is to answer the worksheet on areas of management responsibility, which is referred to in the learning task that relates to this video. By doing that, you will then have fulfilled the second of these learning intentions, which is that you should be able to apply the concepts that you've learnt in this video to case studies. Thank you very much for your attention.